All right, so let's start with the big story that we're tracking on Beyond this morning. The U.S. Justice Department has said that it is extremely disappointed in Julian Assange's ruling of a British court. Remember, the British court blocked the extradition of WikiLeaks founder to the United States amidst fears that Assange may commit suicide. The Department of Justice in a statement has said that the United States will continue to seek WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange's extradition. The statement further states, and I quote, while we are extremely disappointed in the court's ultimate decision, we are gratified that the United States prevailed upon every point of law that was raised. In particular, the court rejected all of Mr. Assange's arguments regarding political motivation, political offense, fair trial and the freedom of speech. We will continue to seek Mr. Assange's extradition to the United States. Now, after this judgment, Mexico has now offered political asylum to WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. The country's president, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, told the press that he will request the release of Assange and that Mexico will now offer him political asylum. The president has also said that Assange is a journalist and he deserves a fair chance. The Latin American nation has previously offered political asylum to other high-profile international figures, such as the former Bolivian president, Evo Morales. Now, the 49-year-old Assange, who holds an Australian citizenship, is accused of illegally hacking into the U.S. government websites, leaking documents on Iraq and Afghanistan wars, and also publishing content on diplomatic cables in 2010. Now, Assange is currently held at the maximum security Belmarsh prison in southeast London. A grand jury in the U.S. state of Virginia has indicted him under espionage on 17 counts for soliciting, gathering and publishing classified documents in 2010. Some, however, say that this brought forth evidence of the kind of the United States and the NATO-led alliance that had invaded into Iraq and Afghanistan in the way that they were carrying out their business there. Now, Julian Assange is the first publisher to be charged under such an act, and he could now face a maximum prison sentence of 175 years. So let's go through some of the key details of Assange's case. Now, Julian Assange founded WikiLeaks in 2006, where he created an internet-based dead letterbox website, which means that leakers could drop any classified or sensitive information. On April 2010, a leaked video from U.S. helicopter emerged on WikiLeaks. The video showed an airstrike by American military personnel shooting at civilians from atop a helicopter in Baghdad. This included two journalists who were also shot dead in that incident. Again, nearly after three months, 91,000 documents carrying U.S. military reports on Afghanistan were also released. Now, the same year, in October, nearly about 400,000 classified military files on the Iraq war became public, followed by thousands of diplomatic cables with candid views on foreign leaders and blunt assessments of security threats that subsequently emerged. Now, the U.S. Department of Justice has formally asked Britain to extradite Assange in 2019. A London court began the first part of the hearing in February last year. And today, the extradition request by the United States has, of course, been rejected. All right, now to get us more on this, especially from the American perspective, we're joined in by our correspondent, Jagrati Dave. She's joining us live from Washington, D.C. Jagrati, let me begin by asking you this. What will the United States now do? Because the Justice Department has said that it is extremely disappointed, but legally, how can it pursue this case further? Well, the Department of Justice has said that it is going to continue to seek Julian Assange's extradition. Um, the a spokesperson for the Department of Justice in the statement that you mentioned where they expressed their disappointment at the decision um, also said that um, they were um, gratified that the United States prevailed on every point of law raised. And so that's why um, they uh, 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 agree with the judge's r ruling that they... Um, that the British judge um, didn't dispute um, the U.S.'s case, and so they seem they feel confident that they can continue um, seeking the extradition. They have a couple of years, uh, a couple of weeks, I beg your pardon, two weeks to file an appeal, and it is expected that uh, the U.S. is going to do that.
Absolutely indeed. And also, uh, could you shed more light on how, how this case is actually viewed within the United States? Because back in 2010, with that shocking video of these civilians in Baghdad were shot at from an American military helicopter, a lot of people were shocked in the nature of what was happening there. So how is Julian Assange, you know, amongst the wider public, looked at? Is he looked at as a journalist or is he just looked at as someone who leaked some classified documents of the American military? Well, that is indeed the crux of this whole thing. Um, the issue of um, the United States involvement in um, Afghanistan, in Iraq, are obviously hugely contentious issues. Um, you know, they're hugely political issues. We do, we're talking about this during the election campaign. Um, the fact of, uh, you know, the, the, the idea of moving, uh, bringing back troops out of foreign wars was a central issue in um, President Trump's campaign. And it's something that Joe Biden has also talked about bringing troops back. It's an issue that's dogged previous presidents as well, um, including Barack Obama. So uh, the issue of American involvement in foreign wars in, in Iraq and Afghanistan is an incredibly sensitive and contentious issue. And the idea uh, of the, the, what Julian Assange has been accused of, effectively getting classified information um, about the U.S.'s involvement in Iraq and, uh, and Afghanistan. The United States government says that this has put lives at risk, risk because it reveals um, their identities. Um, supporters of Julian Assange, however, are saying that this whole case, this whole pursuit of Assange, raises huge questions for press freedoms because they view him as a journalist who's revealed information in the public interest. Absolutely indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Jagrati, the way for joining us and getting us all those insights there.